What is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video talking about the news from Russia. And Russia has recently become one of the biggest memes ever because of the situations happening inside. I just want to share them with you. But before we do that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel to not miss any updates and hit the bell button so that when I post out the video, you get it straight away. Now, before we actually get into the video, a lot of people are asking me, when are we gonna be having the normal videos? Don't worry, guys. Very, very soon, I'm just working on a very interesting video for all of you. Now, let's actually get into the video. So there is this guy in Russia from Russia Today. He's like the biggest propagandist in the whole of Russia. And he was actually the one who was advocating for the block of YouTube in Russia as well. That's him right here. And he actually looks like a fatter version of Simon Pegg. Look at this, guys. Do they look like brothers? It's a bit weird. I saw the guy first and I was like, that guy definitely looks somewhat like Simon Pegg. I don't know why, just the way it is. So this guy, Yegor, wanted to upload his video on RuTube, which is the Russian version of YouTube. But he actually, funnily enough, faced censorship on the platform, and he called, I quote, the platform a complete crap hole, quote, end. According to Yegor, RuTube's policy has turned out to be even more Russophobic then YouTube's policy. Now, I don't know where YouTube is russophobic in any terms, but I just find it funny when you have propagandists like him advocating for banning YouTube. Because, And I, I got to tell you this, guys. This is one of those people who actually posted videos on YouTube channel as well. And once it got banned, he probably thought that, you know, voting for YouTube to get banned will get him extra points in going through his RuTube career. But guess what? That, unfortunately or fortunately, did not work out well for him. And I find it quite funny. People who were saying that YouTube is very bad are now facing consequences using some crappy Russian streaming softwares that don't really work well whatsoever. In other news which I found very interesting is remember we had the prisoner exchange with Russia, the US and Germany when there was a lot of Russian political prisoners released and American prisoners also released and swapped out. Well we got some news from Belarus and I'm not sure if this is grounds on another prisoner exchange or anything like that. But we're having something really interesting happening in Belarus right now. First of all, I have heard that the Belarusian president at the moment is trying to make a law, or he already did, that protects ex-presidents and ex-president's families. So I'm thinking that, that Lukashenko actually might want to leave his presidential seat after this term. Now, I'm not sure about that, but the laws he's creating might be suggesting that. And he also just, Lukashenko just pardoned 30 people convicted in protest cases, 14 women and 16 men. That is what Lukashenko's press services has stated. They all admitted their guilt, sincerely repented of their actions, and committed to leading a law-abiding life. Quote end. The names of the pardon are not released to the public, but what can we take from this? Is this a way for Lukashenko to back down from the Belarusian presidential holdup of the country. Did he have enough of this? Or does he realize that whatever is happening in Russia right now could be the breaking point for being a president in Belarus? Because you know that in Belarus there was mass protest. I forgot what year it was, but there was mass protest when Lukashenko was re-elected once again and people were beaten up on the streets 
by Russian police, basically, because the Belarusian president had to call up Russian SWAT teams and stuff like that because pretty sure the Belarusian police didn't want to go against the Belarusian people, so they called the Russian guys over to beat the crap out of Belarusian people who were protesting against illegitimate presidential elections because from what they counted up, it was supposed to be Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, but she had to run away from the country. I think she had to run away. I'm actually not sure. I forgot. But you get the point, right? So that is what's happening in Belarus. Is this a sign that Russia is weakening down? Because if Russia is weakened down, Belarus will also will have to change. What can we get from this? We'll have to see how the story unveils and what we see from Belarus to understand the inner situation of Russia at the moment. I have also noticed, because when I do research for those videos, I check many different Telegram channels, because Russians use Telegram a lot. And the pro-Z channels and the pro, I don't know, I, I call them the pro-Russian, which is against the war and what is happening in Russia. But the pro-Z channels, when they read about what is going on in Kursk, they're asking themselves, Russian president, why are you not doing anything? Like, literally, there's people trying to say, like, why is he making sit-downs with other people? He should be figuring out how to fix up what's going on in Kursk, what's going on in the Kursk region in general, and how to stop this. But instead, he's just sitting down with some people talking about how are they going to be using the new technologies in the special military operation. So a lot of people are actually getting angrier and angrier day by day. And don't get me wrong, they're not becoming a non-Z person. They're pretty much a Z person, but something is starting to click in their brains and they're asking. Maybe they will find out some information. And the funny thing is, in the pro-Z channels, I see some people writing, well, if Russia didn't attack Ukraine in the first place, we wouldn't have had this problem in Kursk today. And people are say, they're starting to say this in the pro-Z channels. And I find it very interesting. Obviously, those people are getting attacked by other commenters. But we could see that some people are starting to think. And let's hope that it's going to be more and more people like that. And talking about Kursk, obviously, this is one of the most important things happening and the Russian-Ukraine relations, which are obviously bad because there's a war going on. But like I said before, guys, I am not a military specialist. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just collecting information to tell you what I could see and maybe give out my opinion, which should not matter in any case. But I could be wrong and my words could be wrong. I'm just saying it straight away. And when you guys watch... Uh, various YouTube channels and various news outlets, you guys should not only trust one outlet. You should be checking out a lot of sources to see what sounds more like a reality. And just gather information everywhere, guys. Because if you're going to be looking at one place for information, that is the easiest way to get brainwashed. It's like what my history teacher told me once. When you're making a history essay, you can't be using one source. You have to get multiple sources to get your essay to be right and legit, just like news. The bridge across the same river in the village of Glushkovo in the Kursk region was destroyed by HIMARS missile strikes. I'm not sure if it was the Heimers or whatever, but this is what is actually said in the Telegram channels at the moment about this. It is through these bridges that our group is supplied and civilians are also evacuated through them. So basically, those are the bridges. This bridge that was blown up was where the ammunition, the food, the produce and everything that is needed for the Russian military was going through. So now they're cut off from getting this stuff 
to them. The loss of these bridges could lead to the capture by the enemy of the entire area of interest to him, south of same river. So I am actually reading out a pro Z channel from Telegram. And I mean, I'm not sure if it's completely pro Z, probably is, but basically this is Telegram channel from Kursk itself. And they were just updating on what's going on. And this basically means that, you know, Russians themselves already know that if they, the Ukrainians blow up more bridges, that will mean that they could capture more land because they're cutting off from the Russian supply chain, which is very important in a battle from what I have learned from the past three years. Uh, so they're also saying more than 30 settlements were cut off and the evacuations of civilians is now possible only by water. So to get people out of some settlements, you obviously can just get them out by boats because that one bridge was connecting the areas. In addition, the Ukrainian armed forces are striking the bridge in the village of Zvanneye. So once they blow up the bridge in Zvanneye, they could be capturing a lot and a lot of territories in the Kursk region. We will also have to see how that goes on because from what I have noticed from looking at various tactical maps on the internet, looks like the first five days of the Ukrainian insurgency into the Kursk region was expanding very quickly and obviously because the Russians have started pulling in people into the Kursk region, it has slowed down. So right now we will have to see what will start happening after the change of this supply route with the bridge being exploded at the moment. We will just have to see. This is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys found this very informative. And if you are one of those people who watch me for the daily videos, don't worry guys, I have some awesome videos coming out for you quite soon. I'm just making it into a very interesting video. I'm gonna try my best to entertain you guys. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, and I hope you guys will have an amazing day, stay safe, and be kind to everybody. See you guys next time.